Good morning, guys. Morning. Morning, sir. John Davis, is that shirt from BSN? Oh, yes, sir. I like that shirt a lot. It's nice looking. Um, John, you want to pray for us, please? Sir. Sure. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Grace, Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. And, uh, okay. Eric, are you in bed? What's going on in your room? Okay. You're looking good, Eric. You got a nice neck beard going. That's pretty sweet. All right, um, go ahead and take out your homework, guys. Um, actually, yeah, Darrell, you're you're um, you're sending this to me. You just email it to me if if you if you don't think it went through or if, or if it if you had trouble getting it through, just email it to me. All right, I'm gonna, uh, before we get into the homework, I'm gonna send um, something to all you guys, uh, just kind of talking about, uh, or just with the words that you were supposed to do. So you guys see that, I put it up in the chat there. Um, those are the definition ones, and I think I left out one, isolationism, I'll put that one in real quick. And then we'll talk about the other ones. So I don't care. I don't care whether you guys create a Word document and, and, and add those to a Word document, um, copy and paste it, whatever you need to do, whatever is easiest. I don't expect you to be a little scribe and write those out by hand. If that helps you, you're welcome to do that. But um, um, I just copy those for, to a Word document. 
Um, isolationism is the one I haven't put in yet. The idea that America should avoid political ties. Okay. All right, there's, there's, um, there's isolationism. Um, so those, that's, if, if you're keeping track, that's half of them, right? So um, you guys got another half of them to go, and I was hoping what we could do was maybe talk about each one of those. Um, some of them will appear in, in, in the notes, but I'd like to maybe discuss them before we get to that point. Um, so the first one, um, for identifying significance and just go ahead and write this into wherever you're keeping the other definitions. Um, the first one I see is Dawes plan, Dawes plan. And what Dawes plan was, is the businesses, our American businesses would give loans uh, to Germany at low interest rates. And it was meant, and the significance is, it helped the German economy bounce back. Dawes plan. American businesses would give loans to Germany at low interest rates and it would help the German economy bounce back. Okay. Give you a second to write the, to type that in or write that down. Helped who bounce back? The German economy to bounce back. Gun, how do you spell Dawes plan? D A W E S. These are the same words we wrote down the other day. So uh, it might help you to locate them. You say that one more time, because that's one of the ones I didn't get, so. Because you were kind of talking kind of fair. Yeah. This was a, um, American businesses would provide loans to Germany at low interest rates, and it helped their economy bounce back. Next one is, um, Weimar Republic. And if you didn't get this down the other day, you know what, I'm just going to copy it, copy and paste all these words. So, um, so you have them and then I'll, and then I'll tell you the definitions that way. I don't have to spell them every single time. So these are the other words in case you didn't get them the other day. Dawes plan, Weimar, Weimar Republic, Neville Chamberlain, Munich conference, and uh, Rhineland and Francisco Franco. Okay, um, Weimar Republic is the German democratic government after World War I. German democratic government after World War I. German democratic government after WW1.
and the significance it failed when its policies brought severe inflation failed when policies brought severe inflation Weimar Republic German democratic government after World War One it failed when policies brought on severe inflation and keep in mind you know I'll be posting this later so if you don't if you don't end up getting every single word or every single uh, thing now it ain't the end of the world. You see that one for Neville Chamberlain there? I'm thinking this might be faster if I just typed each one of these in uh, one by one instead of relying on the slowest typer to, in order to get this done. So there's, there's um, Neville Chamberlain, British prime minister who tried to appease Adolf Hitler to avoid war. All right, putting up Munich conference now, there it is. Meeting of European powers who agreed that Hitler could not invade beyond its pre, uh, pre with one E, uh, World War I borders. And then Rhineland will be next. Real simple one here, area boarding France and Germany that Hitler invaded. And last one's Francisco Franco. and then Francisco Franco. And once you have all those, um, you'll, you're good to go. So uh, Francisco Franco, Spanish military officer who became dictator when he attempted a coup and instituted fascism in Spain. So uh, once you have all those words, you should be good for the quiz. Quiz formatted very similarly to the ones we've done in the past. Um, so we shouldn't have any issues there. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that assignment. And I know that there are so, still some of you guys writing things down. That's perfectly fine. If I call how many, them, coach, how many words in total is that? Uh, I think it's 11. 
All right, it's either 11 or 12. I got 10. I'm trying to figure out what I'm missing. 10, let me see. So, Franco, did I miss one? Oh, I gave you guys Dawes plan. Remember, we spoke about Dawes plan. Did you get that? That's the one I'm missing. Okay. Let's see. Um, some, can somebody um, put what we said for Dawes plan just so we know we all have the same thing? I remember I told you guys, but I can't, but I don't have that information in front of me right now. So uh, can somebody copy and paste that and put it in here? Thank you, Joseph. You got it, Gary? Dawes plant? Yes, sir. Okay. And then the other ones, remember the ones that I post co copied and pasted initially, puppet government appeasement, depression, fascism, authoritarian, and isolationism. So um, that, that, covers, that covers the content of your quiz. Your quiz will be made available to you um, all day on Friday, just like, just like last time. And you just take that quiz. You'll have uh, like 10 minutes to take it and you'll be good to go. Questions about that? Cool. All right. Uh, so, uh, Mein Kampf, uh, Bigelow, you want to take that one, please? Yes, sir. I just have to get into my other computer. To... Uh, I'll, wait, I'll wait for you then. Uh, Guire, you want to take Mein Kampf? Yes, sir. Can I get there real quick? I didn't call on you, Daniel. All right, sir. You you can get there. I don't know what Guire is doing. All right, let's see. Darrell, you take mine, Conf. Okay. Um, it was it was a written book by, by Adolf Hitler for the time of the uh, political prisoner in the March Munich. I don't know how you say it, but M U N I C C in Munich. Yeah, Munich. Munich. Um, my kind of stands for uh, my struggle, and it basically talks about Hitler's thoughts and stuff. Good. Uh, concentration camps. Go ahead, Cole Carmen. You're muted. Am I supposed to be reading out of the textbook? You're supposed to tell me what you, what you put for homework. We just went over the homework, sir. Nah, that wasn't the homework, bud. The homework was a textbook reading. I'll have to open mine. I can take it, sir. Go ahead, Bigelow. Sure. Concentration camps or work camps of political, political prisoners and often had terrible working conditions. Okay, totalitarian white knee fleur. Totalitarian dictatorship. Go ahead. Uh, I don't have it. All right. Uh, let's see. Joseph Fox. All right. Sam Saunders. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have it. Davin Cosby. Mr. Robin. Which one did you say, sir? Totalitarian dictatorship. Yes, sir. A, a form of government in which the ruler is an absolute dictator. Okay, uh, is an absolute dictator, seeks to control all aspects of society, similar to, I think, the last one we had, which was totalitarianism. Uh, fascism, go ahead, Berthy. Uh, I, I put the definition for fascism for totalitarianism. All right, well, then just, well, then, well, then just tell me what you put for that. Uh... 
I don't know the definition of fascism. I got it, Coach. All right, Gary. A nationalistic right-wing system of government where authority authority of public views, with authority of public views. Okay, authority of public views, priority of the state over, over the individual. You could have said any of those things. Uh, describe Hitler's youth and his military background. Go ahead, Guire, take that one, please. Um, wasn't he, um, I don't know, I didn't do it. Okay, well, don't, I mean, don't bluff, Guire. Just tell me you didn't do it. I mean, I can sit, see you sitting there studying like, oh, my gosh, I better get ready for the next question because he might call on me. Very clearly, that's what's happening. Uh, Cole Carmen, go ahead. I don't even know what we're looking at. Oh, okay. He's, uh, did, did you do the – it doesn't seem like you did the homework. Did you do the which, homework? Which homework was it? It was a textbook reading, pages 540 Russian through 544. Is it the part two? Part two, no. Uh, I, I don't know what we're doing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Boy Scouts. Go ahead, Berthy. Go ahead and take that one, please. Yeah, they were like, um, it was like a youth group. They were like they're Boy Scouts for them. Boy Scouts? What are you talking about? Well, that's how, that's how I, it was described to me from my, back when I was in like my freshman year. They were like, they were like called like Hitler's Boy Scouts. I don't want what well, you talked about your freshman year at Hargrave or wherever you were. I want to know what, you, what, was, what was. I got going you, on coach. I got you, coach. The coach text I got you. Said. I got you, coach. The guys coming up with all this yeah. stuff. Go ahead, Bigelow. So, Hitler Youth, what? No, when when he was young, was he was fearful of his father, but very close to his mother. And he wanted to be an artist and, and applied for Vienna School of Art, but got denied two times. Okay, good. Yeah, um, yeah, he wanted to be an artist, and 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 you know, you can go online, you can see his art, and you can actually his art goes for you know, even though he wasn't a very good artist, his art goes for very expensive. Um, let's see. All right, next question. Politically. Uh, oh wait, did you did you say his military background, Biggs? I I didn't, but I can if you want to. Yeah, go for it, Bigelow. His military background was at the beginning of World War One. He joined the German Army, 16th. I can't remember the exact one division, but it was the 16th division for Germany. He apparently was very distinct and won the Iron Cross. Yeah, he actually he, he was um, responsible for single-handedly saving a couple soldiers in no man's land. So I mean, he, he did they, he, he did distinguish himself to a certain extent. Um, Parker Tootle, what were the results of the nineteen thirty-two election, uh, and how did those results boost Hitler? Hitler ran against the eighty-five-year-old general and lost the race, but his National uh, Socialist Party did so well. That was quickly becoming the uh, largest party in the large stack. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, yeah, so it, good. And I, you know, I can tell, I don't know who you became friends with in the honors class there, Parker Tootle, but it seems to be working for you. I just read straight out of the book. Ah, yeah. Okay. Hey, can't go wrong, right? I can tell. I can tell you went straight out of the book. Cool. You skipped number three. Did I skip number three? Yeah, Hitler's Nazi Party appeal. Oh, my bad. My apologies. Go ahead, Davin. Uh, take number okay. three. Um, to the political the political right of Germany, it appealed to many on the political right because it wanted to restore Germany to greatness to form the Third Rank. And for the middle lower class, I put it assures decent living to workers and protection to small businessmen, farmers, shopkeepers. He said this because he knew how real the struggle was. Okay. All right. Davin's found somebody in the honors class, too. Good job, Davin. Nah, cool. Be better to work smart than hard, right, Davin? No, you got to work hard. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Xavier, why don't you take the next one? Um in the 1930s, the Nazi and Communist parties were competing for control of Germany. How did, how did Hitler 
essentially remove the communists as a threat. Please explain. Xavier, you're on mute. I think Xavier ghosted us. I think he did. Okay, Logan Melendez, you go ahead and take that one, please. What question are we on? Oh, Logan, caught no, him with his pants down. My Perhaps pants are down, sir. What question? Um, question. Uh, Five. Five, yeah. Um. <coughs> the building in Germany caught on fire. The uh, Reich, the Reichstag, yeah, building in Berlin. Um, it caught on fire. Okay, and so what about that uh, became? I mean, how did how did Hitler take advantage of that? Is I guess the question I'm asking. Um, a lot of communist leaders were arrested. Yes, and so he yeah he blamed he blamed the communists and and there was several reader, uh, several leaders who ended up being arrested. Good. Uh, let's see. Describe two similarities, uh, Terence Rhodes, between Hitler's Germany and Mussolini's Italy. Described as uh, described in the text, please. Um, Mussolini and Hitler were very similar. After reading, both had total forms of leadership so they had all power both did not allow the freedom of speech and they both only broad broadcasted their representatives okay good 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 describe some of the measures hitler took against the jews in the early part early part of his dictatorship john davis with the sweet shirt go go for it um he like made sure they couldn't be in office and uh, the Jewish professors couldn't like be in school. Jews were treated like less, less of members of, of the German society. In 1935, they just deprived Jews of citizenship. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you, John. All right, guys. Um, so um, we're going to pick up with the between the war period today. I'm going to hope that we cover everything in the before bet uh, before the war, or excuse me, the between the war period, uh, and w then we will uh, discuss World War II uh, going into going into next week. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Uh, go ahead and get your notes out. Get ready to go. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so this 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 presentation is going to discuss every you know the entire part of the lead up, um, and we're essentially starting oops a new unit. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, we'll be starting a new unit uh, since we're done now with the Russian Revolution. Um, this unit is the last unit we will cover as a class in the test at the end of the year will cut or excuse me the, yeah the test at the end of the year will cover unit 11 which was the Russian Revolution or maybe that was unit 10 uh, I can't quite remember so um, if, if, if it was unit 10 then this should be unit 11 uh, we call it unit 12 because typically the between the war period um, is, is a unit in and of itself but we're trying to fast forward a little bit so we get to World War two so um, I guess I guess the test is on. Just bottom line, test is on World War II and the Russian Russian Revolution. Um, so we have uh, we'll be discussing the origins of Hitler um, and this Aaron Grapes look look alike kid meeting uh, Adolf Hitler. Interesting. Okay, so uh, let's let's move on. So go ahead and get that. I'll be right back, I'm gonna get myself some more coffee.
So before we before we talk about, I'll let you write. I have a tendency to start talking before you guys start writing. So. Hey, Coach, can I go use the restroom real quick? Bigelow, it's not a whole lot I can do to stop you, is there? I mean, I'm in my house, so it's going to be kind of hard. Yeah. All right, so the Weimar Republic, one of our words. Uh, you know, obviously Germany gets torn apart from that um, from that Treaty of Versailles. Um, it's in bad, yeah, it's in it's in a bad way. Um, so the Second Reich, remember that Reich that we that we announced right after the uh, right after the war, the Franco-Prussian War, and kind of continued through this time period. Second Reich is done. Um, it's been and Germany's been taken apart. It's been given lands, it, it taken lands like Alsace and Lorraine, given over to France. It's been taken uh, lands in the east and given back to either to Russia or created uh, new countries entirely. So it is. It has been completely, completely dismantled. And not only that, but as we mentioned, they had to pay uh, crazy war reparations. You guys remember what the dollar figure was? How much did they have to pay? I forgot the coach. That's okay, Deb. Uh, the answer is uh, fifty-five billion dollars. So uh, their money ended up losing value. Uh, so they had this great idea, and actually, it was a horrible idea. I'm being sarcastic. They said, "Okay, well." Uh, if we're going to pay this much money, that means we should just print out 55 billion, literally print out 55 billion marks and use that to pay off our debt. Well, it doesn't quite work like that. What happens when you create, when you create money that isn't there? High inflation. Crazy inflation. The money, the inflation was so bad that the money was not, was literally not worth the the um, the paper it was printed on. You had people throwing thousands of dollars into the fire because it was worth more to kindle a fire than it was in actual value. You had kids taking like large stacks of money, like what you see over here, and like using it as as toy blocks and creating like towers and stuff like that. You had people taking wheelbarrows and money uh, to the grocery store in order to to uh, buy a slight to buy a loaf of bread. Um, this has happened a few times in, um, in history. Uh, the most recent example is the country of Zimbabwe in Africa. And you can literally, you can literally go on Amazon and you can buy a, t a $100 trillion bill. $100 trillion from Zimbabwe because $100 tr trillion um, and Zimbabwe money is worth about less than a dollar U.S. So um, they just, they completely messed up that scenario. Not only that, but you've got, of course, all these young men who have been maimed by the war in Germany. Many of them are forced into homelessness and, and they, they just got all sorts of problems. So 
Um, the German people are become immediately resentful, not just because of the war reparations, but what were they especially resentful about as far as what the Treaty of Versailles asked them to do? Uh, cutting down their military. Cutting down the military was another provision, but what was kind of the insult to German pride? Cutting it in half with, with Poland. Uh, that too, changing territorial borders, but what did they have to accept blame for? Blame oh, the whole war. The whole war. Yeah, the, all of World War I. So even though it was a world war, it wasn't just their fault, they got to accept blame for it. So um, uh, all, for all these reasons, very resentful. They didn't even like their own government. The people who were placed in leader position, leadership positions in their government were a bunch of idiots. Uh, because of what they did with the inflation, and it, they were just inept and, and, and incompetent. Um, so the Dawes plan ends up being uh, kind of this American plan to help kind of Germany out a little bit. Um, U.S. bank loans being sent, and that would finance German companies, and they would be able to get on their feet to a certain extent, and it was working. Uh, but here's what ended up happening. Um, in 1929, you have what's referred to as Black Thursday. Black Thursday, this is when the stock market essentially collapsed in the United States, and not just in the United States, but worldwide. Um, it, was, it was especially bad in the United States, but it was also especially bad in Germany. Um, Hold on a second. Uh, I'll let you guys write this down. My wife's giving me a call. I got to pick this up. All right, so we end up seeing, um, because of the Great Depression, because it had such a bad impact on the United States, it's gonna have a bad impact in, um, in, uh, on the countries that are reliant on, those, on that Dawes plan for, for loans. Because they're reliant on the Dawes plan for loans, they end up having massive problems. Uh, because a lot of the American businesses, then they stop handing out those loans. And so, you know, what was used as a crutch essentially means that they're going to fall flat on their face. And so things get really bad in Germany. And the fact of the matter was, this Weimar Republic that they had set up, this democratic government, it had just proven that it just was not going to fix anything. And it essentially fell, fell apart. And the people are unhappy with it. They're longing for the days when they were kids, when Germany used to be great. And um, you know, they're, hoping, they're hoping essentially that, um, that somebody can come along. So what all this does is it paves the way for uh, people like Hitler to come through and um, and, and take control of things, especially if Hitler has a good selling point, if he has a good uh, message for these people. Uh, same thing is happening in Italy. In Italy, you got this guy, Benito Mussolini, who's coming through and he's, and he's going to you know, make these, or make, make claims about a need to uh, return, return the greatness of their country. So, you know, for all these reasons, we end up seeing, um, um, new extreme powers kind of kind of come into the fold and and attempt to make these changes uh, in Italy and in and in uh, Germany.
Darrell, what do you got? Being a weirdo? Oh, I just got these binoculars out of here. I was just sick of them. Yeah. So. Use this to look at your next door neighbors. I just. I see through that big head of yours, so I got to use Creep, some creep on the girl next door. I guess I got to use right. some Let's see through that big head. You see, that the, the comment you just made makes no sense, because if I have such a big head, you wouldn't need binoculars and able to see it. See, see, You're actually see. saying the opposite. You're saying I've got a small head, and you need binoculars in order to see it. Thank you, Darrell. Thank you for saying I have a small head. I appreciate it. I Break. said. Why would you want a small head, Coach? I'm just saying, you know, Darrell's always saying I got a big head, and now he needs binoculars. He's never had it before, so he ain't worth one. This, this quarantine situation is pretty perfect for you, Darrell. You don't really have to walk around anywhere. You don't have to play, uh, you don't have to play baseball. You can just kind of sit around. I haven't been getting my cooks in. I, 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 I'm, just, I'm just realizing that. Yep. We're waiting. Mm hmm All right. Um, this will be – this will end up being – I think – oh, is the, is the Roman numeral off? Okay, so this should be Roman numeral three. Um, not sure if this is the last one we'll get through today, but there's only four slides, so. This is three? Uh, yeah, this, this should be three. It should be three. Uh, so, uh, there's our two guys, uh, Hitler and Mussolini. Um, and we're going to just, we're going to describe what fascism is all about because this is a new concept. Um, and it kind of goes, it clashes quite a bit with communism. If you talk about kind of the political spectrum when we talk about politics today we talk about republicans and we talk about democrats and you know republicans are in in terms of right or left where would republicans be right yeah republicans are right democrats are on the left and so uh, if you talk about if you, so communism for example communism or socialism is that on the on democrat side of things or the republican democrat Democrat. Fascism is going to be on the Republican side of things. Kind of like communism or socialism is an extreme form of, uh, is on the extreme left, fascism is going to be on the extreme right. And so, you know, what we're seeing during this time is, is a lot of anger and anger due to the, ineffective of the ineffectiveness of the governments that Italy and Germany just kind of you know, that, that, that uh, their people are looking at, they're like, gosh, you guys really just kind of let, let the, let the other European countries have their way with you guys. And you, you weren't really looking out for us. And not only that, but in terms of how you responded to this crisis, you've just been completely inept. And so there was a lot of anger. Um, and it's across the board. You got poor people who are upset and you also have wealthy people who are real upset. Um, the poor people, are going to be more likely to turn to what? Uh, communism or fascism? Communism. Communism for sure, because this idea of equality really is what they're shooting for. Um, and so you've got the wealthier people and they're looking at how all of the, how socialism is becoming more popular, communism, and they're like, ah, oh, wow, that, that does not appeal to me. This idea of equality does not sound good to me. And so uh, what they start talking about is uh, fascism in many ways is a reaction against socialism. And so they're both angry, but they have different ways of trying, you know, the idea with fascism is, hey, we've got to restore our country's greatness. We've got to get us back on track to where we were. And so there's, there's, this, uh, there's this idea that they need to that, that fascism provides an answer to that. They don't like the idea of communism, these richer people, but they do like the idea of fascism. So um, communism, fascism, those are the alternatives. What is, what is, so what in the world is fascism? Is it a political emphasis on a nationalist or a one ruler policies? 
So not, not, you know, equality across the board, but one guy who's making the decisions uh, and uh, acting unilaterally and doing what it takes to, in order to fix things. What can be the problem? What, what is a weakness of democracy? In what way can a democracy, like American democracy, for example, in what way can a democracy be weak? You can't get things done. Yeah. Why is that, Joseph? Because disagreement. People don't agree with your saying, so they won't like, pass the law. Yeah, right. So, so there's 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 going to be uh, people who you know if you try to so for example this coronavirus situation if we tried to get everything done through Congress it could be problematic right because what's the big debate now as far as the coronavirus goes? Do we open up? Yeah. Do we open up? Do we open up now or do we wait a little bit? And it's a very political conversation, isn't it? So you've got. You've got some people, largely more people who are more conservative, who are saying, hey, open things up. We got to get going now. And then you've got people who are a bit more liberal saying, hey, we need to wait. We can't, you know, we can't uh, sacrifice uh, America or, you know, we can't expose people who are vulnerable to the virus. Um, you know, we haven't seen the downslope of that curve yet. So you've got people with these competing ideologies and they're clashing. And uh, very often that can lead to gridlock in government. And so, you know, what's helpful often with one leader, whether it's a Hitler, whether it's a Mussolini, whoever, is that they can make decisions unilaterally, which can be helpful in a time of crisis, because in a time of crisis, decisions need to be made quickly, which also partly explains why a guy like Hitler was able to, to come to power. So think about fascism as extreme nationalism, like your country's the best but not just your country's the best, um, that your country should thrive at the expense of other countries. So if it means that you got to railroad a few, a few, a few countries in the process of becoming great, then that's perfectly fine. Not only that, but you need to place the, uh, place the uh, priority of the country over yourself. So this idea that the individual is not important, right? That it's all about the state, which is kind of interesting because uh, communism is essentially saying the same thing. How? How would communism uh, be de-emphasizing the ind individual? Joseph, what do you think? Um, like, because you give everything, like everybody has the same. Mm -hmm. And you're sort you're giving a lot of it to the state. Yeah, it's all about the community, isn't it? So it, it becomes interesting when you get far enough left and far enough right. It's almost like you come back together again at certain points. Now, um, that's not to say that fascism is the same thing as communism. It's not. But I think there are elements of both that are very similar. So um, this was especially popular in places like Germany and places like Italy. And what we will do next class is we will talk before we end up getting into the lead up for World War II. We'll talk about um, how each one of these countries kind of, uh, or how each one of these guys here, Hitler and Mussolini, kind of rise through the ranks. I will say this, Mussolini is the one who started fascism. Hitler actually sent Mussolini a basically like a piece of fan mail asking for his autograph saying hey you know I'd love to meet you I'd love to talk about you know what we can do in Germany and all this other stuff and Mussolini just blew him off he's like ah oh, this is just another fan um you know years later you know Hitler is going to become you know the top dog especially in terms of the fight uh, the uh, fighting uh in World War II Uh, once you guys get this, you can go ahead and log off. Um, thanks for sticking around today. Coach. All right. See you later. See you, Coach. Bye. Thank you. All right, uh -huh. All right Coach.